Okay, so the first lesson that I want to go over uh, has to do with uh, this lesson called uh, Stalking the Exit. And uh, this is one from November 7th. And uh, it's so it's a volatility trade uh, on the day after the 2012 election. Uh, if you look in the chat room, there was about a 16 or a 20 R win on this one. Uh, it had uh, it had three positions where I ended up getting in at like 29, uh, 30, and 39, each with 30 cents uh, initial stops. But the main point that I wanted to make on this one was uh, what to do about exiting. And so the situation on this one was uh, uh, by the time you see this this location on the screen here at 10:54. In, I think that's Eastern. Um, I've already got a, a double-digit win on this position that that continues to go up, and uh, and at the peak up in here, what I want I want you to notice the first thing that I notice is this bar right here, which is a parabolic bar up. In other words, it's a uh, it's a large range bar. And you can and uh, you can also see the ribbon expanding. The Bollinger Band two is expanding, uh, and then the next bar is the first red bar, in like a seven or eight bars. Like all this stuff here with green, and you can see the ten, the blue lines pulling away from the black line. So we get range expansion, and it's running away to the upside. Then you get into this bar here, and uh, so now I'm holding about twenty R in hand. But the main point is that after a large expansion bar up, after about seven in a row, uh, now what you get is a leveling off of the uh, of the upper Bollinger Band on that Bollinger Band too. So there was no uh, no follow through on that bar, and it opens here and then closes lower. So when that bar closes lower, I I would call that that formation uh, an exhaustion bar. It was a previously the previous bar was a large range. And now the price is rolled over. The bar itself turns red, and that's a place where I'm going to tighten my stop. Now it turns out in the very next bar, uh, we have a lower opening. Uh, doesn't make a new high. We have the second red bar forming, and now you can see that the Bollinger Band two has rolled over, uh, and that slope, that that dotted line in the middle, is the actual uh, the average of the Bollinger Band. So it's like a two-period moving average. You can see that has rolled over all the way up. That that uh, that had a positive slope. In this bar, it rolled over. The bar turned red. Now we get a second red bar going, and now the ribbon has come down and crossed uh, the 30 period regression line, and that's good enough for me. Uh, I'm ready to get out right at that blue line. So on that continued weakness, I end up being an exit in this in that bar at 31.70. Now that doesn't look like a big deal on this move. But that's because of the scale. Uh, this thing was running so fast that the scale is kind of enormous. So I go ahead and get out uh, of all three positions at once, just as price uh, uh, is rolling over here and is in that second red bar. Now, uh, if you wait for the regression line crossover, right? That's the RLCO signal. Uh, that actually occurs right here. But where price is at that time is down here, right at the edge of the river. So even if you don't get out here inside the first red circle, sort of by law, you have to get out at uh, around 31.20, which is when price re-enters the river. Because then what you have is you have a regression line crossover signal after an extreme move outside of the river. Uh, that RLCO signal is telling you you actually want to be thinking about shorten this position with the idea of making uh, uh, of price coming all the way back to the Bollinger Band mean, which right now is 30.50. So the exit here at 31 and a quarter uh, is 70 cents or almost 80 cents. That's uh, a little, that's about a two and a half hour move from the edge of the river back to the Bollinger Band mean. And that's why you want to get out not later than price re-entering the river after a nice move up. Uh, the other point is, I, by taking that exit in the second candle, when the Bollinger Band 2 has rolled over and price comes back and is getting ready to cross the 30-period uh, regression line, 
you can get out at 3170 instead of 3120 and that's a 50 cent price uh, improvement 50 cents per share price improvement that's on a 30 cent initial risk like which I typically use on this one that's one and a half R just by making the decision to get out earlier so uh, stalking the exit uh, what I'm noticing here is I've got a runaway good position and that concerns me I've got a large green bar that moves up I have this uh, exhaustion bar that makes a slightly new high but then quickly rolls over and starts to decay uh, then the second red bar starts forming the Bollinger Band 2 has rolled over price is approaching the 30 period regression line the the uh, the slope of the 10 period regression line is starting to roll over it's slowing down so all of that is enough for me to go ahead and cash that position and I would call that stalking the exit uh, any questions on that uh, if not I'll move on to the to the next uh, the next All right, hang with me here while I get this uh, just about ready for a new lab. I'm going to start my underperformance, pissing me off, get my language. Okay, now the next one, exit stalking, stalk and reverse. Okay, now uh, this one is from the same day, and now we're, what we're looking at here is SVXY. That's the... Uh, the inverse of the previous symbol, which was UVXY, that's the double leveraged VIX. And so what I want you to notice is uh, in the previous case study, what we said was I wanted to be out not later than the regression line crossover signal, which was a signal for an entry going the other way. Well, it turns out as uh, whenever UVXY is going up, SVXY is going down. This is the tail end of that same move only in SVXY it looks like a fill. Well, that uh, where I have highlighted now, if that second that second green bar after a long run down, uh, that's that's the place where I am exiting UVXY on the long side, and now I shift my attention over to SVXY. So where this regression line crossover occurs below the river in SVXY is the same place that the RLCO signal. Uh, fired at the end of the large move in UVXY. So now instead of trying to short UVXY, uh, I just play the simpler play which is to go long SVXY. And so my entry here is at 6270 uh, when I have a regression line crossover and now price has entered the river. So now I can get into this thing at 6270 uh, with a stop uh, just below uh, that 30 period regression line. And now when I'm making that entry, there's a couple places that I will be looking for um, uh, reasonable price targets. One of them is this return to um, uh, the Bollinger Band mean. So I'm looking from 6270-ish to about 63.50. So that's about an 80 cent move. That's a 2R move. Next place I'm going to look at is uh, I see the VWAP is right here, the volume weighted average price. That looks uh, reasonable. That's so close to the far side of the river that both of those, uh, you know, are really about the same price target. So that'd be about 64.30. So that could be almost a three and a half or almost four hour move just to get to the far side of the river. Now what happens on this one is that uh, it moves up, it gets near the Bollinger Band mean, and then for about 15 or 20 minutes goes sideways. It doesn't break out and go, but it also doesn't fail, and that actually feels pretty good. So that 
side, it's almost like a miniature sideways quite panel, if you will. Now what happens is I start seeing price move up, and now you can see the Bollinger Band 2, that ribbon starting to expand, and I interpret that as failure to fail, could be starting the next leg up and then leaving the river. So uh, if, if I had exited anywhere in here to lock in 1.5 or 2R, uh, just that much price action will get me interested in playing now to the top of the river and perhaps beyond. If it gets past the top of the river and the VWAP, it could go as far above the river as it did when it dipped below the river here. So that could actually be a very good second entry move. So if I am still in this position, I really like that price action. If I had gotten out of that position because of this sideways action, then this would be a good way to get back in. So that's, uh, that's a uh, uh, stop and reverse after an RLCO trade on one side. Now it reverses and we can play. Because of the size of this move on the downside, uh, I'm much more likely to take this as a profit in here because that looks like a counter trend move. And I'm really expecting that if it fails here, I want to get short. The only thing that makes me interested in this at all is the fact that the 30 period regression line, which had been steeped down, has now become flat and is starting to roll up. So I actually interpret that as a, as a changing of the season and a potential move uh, setting up there. So and that's the um, uh, uh, RLCO stop and reverse. Any questions on that? Uh, if not, I will go ahead and move on to the next one. Yeah, at least that's uh, a trend. I'm more likely to use the Bollinger Band mean as a target. Yeah, I always expected that it would get back there, but I'm not always expecting it to follow through. In fact, if that if that big down move was going to continue in the market, then I would expect to get near the mean and then start fading. So I don't want to stick around too long for that one. Uh, so getting the first trend, and then if I if I see one just to get to the Bollinger Band mean, I'll take it. Uh, but I'm not but I'm not believing that that's going to be like V bottom. So yeah, counter trend. I play for the uh, return to the to the mean. Okay, so let's take a let's take a look at this one. Uh, we talked about this a little bit in the chat room as well. I thought it was a good uh, a good quiz. Okay, so, so what we have on this one, uh, this, this happens to be UBSY, uh, again, just because I've, tra I've been trading in a lot, but it, it could be anything. Um, and so what we have is the, uh, the blue region is the 30 period Bollinger Band. You can see the, the river, if you will, is sideways. And uh, you've got uh, both regression lines uh, have been in the river for a long time. And so we have what looks like uh, a sideways quiet channel happening. Uh, the orange again is the two period Bollinger Band. And so now uh, what I've, uh, what I've, what we've got here um, is uh, uh, the question that we, we now have the uh, prices in the river, 30 period Bollinger or the 30 period regression line though has left the river and it's above the river and now price you can see dip below the mean but now is getting ready to break out above the edge of the river and the question really is what's the real high in this sideways channel that we could or should treat uh, for a new high you know normally what I like to see is I like to see it break out from a congestion zone making a new high and then that, that's what should trip me into the position but what we've got here is we've got a number of bars. We have this one here, and we have this one here, uh, both of which uh, spiked very high, but there was no follow through. In fact, in neither case did the Bollinger Band follow it all the way up. So that could have been one bad print up around 3170. Uh, and uh, uh, 
and then price came back and spent most of its time right here at the edge of the river. So the question really is, uh, do I want to wait to see price take out these two high spikes here and here and wait till about 3180-ish uh, before, before I call it a new high? Or I notice now on the Bollinger Band 2, which is, remember the Bollinger Band with, a, with one standard deviation, plus or minus one standard deviation, is showing you where two-thirds of the price action occurred in the look-back period. Bollinger Band 2 looks back at the last six minutes in this case. Uh, and so what I like, I like to enter uh, when this price is going to break above the blue line, well, letter B, that's where I want to get it instead of waiting for 3180. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to get in this thing around 3130 uh, or 3140 instead of 3180. And with a 30 cent stop, that actually is going to be the difference of a full R. So I'm really willing to take uh, the top of those flattened uh, Bollinger Bands and treat that as the real price high. That's where most of the resistance had occurred in the last, uh, you know, one, two, three, four um, attempts at breakout. So now it didn't, it only had one tiny fail below the Bollinger Band mean and the VWAP, and now it's getting ready to go up again. Now if it breaks out, I'm ready to get that at B. So it's really just a case of where you want to play uh, with uh, with the risk, and uh, you run the risk of getting some false entries. If you play B, uh, at A, you run the risk of waiting, leaving an R or an R and a half on the table uh, if this is the one that breaks out. So my typical habit is to be at B and then not stick around in case it fails like it has before. Uh, yeah, so that's that one. Uh, let's see, let's do another one now. Lisa asked me, wouldn't I be stopped out? Uh, well, you, you're all, uh, when I take that 30 cent initial stop, I don't make that a trailing stop right away. I just, that's sort of my bottom line. I like to let it grow uh, and then adjust after that. So, I mean, I, I'm not worried get, about getting stopped out because I know how to get back in. Um, let's see here. Let's see if we can. Okay, this next one is a, uh, uh, this actually turns out to be uh, what happened on that trade. Uh, this is about the next, uh, you know, 60 minutes off of it. So the, the, the uh, time frame is a little bit compressed. So this is what actually happened. Uh, these were those spikes uh, where, it, where it had uh, broken out previously. And then we end up getting the entry around uh, 31. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, here was the spike up to 3180. If you had waited for 3180, you wouldn't have gotten in until about this third green circle. Uh, but what I'm getting here is uh, an entry at 3120 when it takes out this previous um, the the uh, Bollinger Band twos swing high, if you will. Uh, and so I'm going to get a I'm going to get an entry at 31.20 here instead of waiting for 31.80ish. I get 31.20 and it's cleared this little hump. What I like about this is we had an RLCO below the river and uh, higher made a higher high a higher low broke out held support at the at the uh, Bollinger Band mean again and now I can get 31.20. Uh, it moves with a stop down here at the red line so that's a uh, actually only about a 23 cent stop. Um, so it's never even threatened. Uh, it, it moves up, it comes back, it holds north of the river, and then takes out another, then it makes another new high. As soon as it gets above this, uh, 
Bollinger Band 2 local high. Uh, I can get in here at 3145. So I'll take that as a second position. At 3145 and starting to move out, I like being right here with two positions in hand. I have about an R in hand. And it's moving up. Uh, there's no resistance in sight until it gets up here around 3180-ish which was the other place I could have gotten in. Uh, so it comes up to 31.75, uh, trades sideways for about three minutes, and starts taking off again. Uh, I put in a third position at 31.80. What I like having, I like this one at 31.80, because now I have three positions in hand. I have two R in hand. Actually, no, actually three R in hand. And, uh, and then if it takes off above 31.80, it's going to really go. In this case, it doesn't. It actually it went up a little bit to like uh, uh, 3185 and then horsed around and started coming back. Because I had three positions on and it was getting towards lunchtime here, uh, I went ahead and scratched uh, the third trade and basically exited them all at 3180. And so I get 2R on the first move from the green circle to the red, 1R from the second green circle to the red, and then the third trade is just simply a scratch <coughs> because it had no follow through. When I've got three positions on, it's got to have a pretty quick follow-through or I don't stick around long because with, with three times my position size on it, I can't really afford a sharp reversal all the way back to the red line. Otherwise, I'm having too much money back. So when I put that third one on, it's either got to perform in the next couple of minutes or I'm, or I'm getting ready to exit. That, that would be failure to follow through. Okay, so that's that's what I want to show on that. Um, and that, come, that goes back to that previous quiz about did you want to enter at 3120 or wait for confirmation at 3180? If I waited until about 3180, the only thing that happens is I probably enter, it fails to follow through, and I probably end up either scratching the trade or letting it come back for a minor, a fractional loss. Uh, uh, and so I like capturing this move when it departs the river as opposed to waiting for, uh, for it to take out another position. However, if it had been a runaway move up, I'd have been very well set because I'd had three positions in with three R in hand already, just as it was starting to go. So if there, uh, uh, even if, if there's any questions on that, uh, if not, that that takes us about 30 minutes through, and that was uh, all the main lessons I wanted to cover today. And it looks like I'm locking up here nicely. There we go. Let me see if I can get one more. One more in here. Uh, let's see here. Let's Okay, so this is the RLCO with the TNA. Okay. Um, now, what we have on this one is uh, uh, a regression line crossover. This was from Friday. This was with TNA. And uh, right from the opening, there was a gap down, a regression line crossover. Uh, I was willing to take an entry here at 52.10. Uh, I took a second entry at 52.80, each with a 0.3 initial stop. Um, so when I get that second position in, uh, I actually I two R in hand from the first move, and price is leaving the river. Now uh, this ends up being a really uh, nice trade. Uh, it, I want you to notice a couple things. Um, first of all, notice that the Bollinger Band 30 mean, the thick red line in the middle of the river, uh, it, it, price never really comes back to touch that at all. And I want you to notice that the Bollinger Band 2, the Orange River, right? Uh, I want you, it crosses, the ribbon crosses the Bollinger Band mean here, and then uh, doesn't cross back over until that move is over way up here at 53.40. All right, so that's a, that's a dollar move. You know, it crossed the river here at 52.20, comes back into the river here at 53.50. So actually, that's a dollar 30, potentially a 4 hour move on a single position. Uh, and then while it's in that trade, uh, 
the Bollinger Band mean is outside the river, when that thing comes back into the river, uh, that somewhere in here between between the time of the highest high and the 10 period and the 30 period going over, uh, not later than crossing the Bollinger Band mean you got out of that thing. But for me, the exit is about 5340-ish, uh, right, right up here inside this red circle, which gives you about 6R. And what occurred to me as I was looking at that one from a distance is you might consider trading the crossover of Bollinger Band 2 and the Bollinger Band 30 mean, which is the just notice when the uh, when uh, on your charts when that Bollinger Band crosses after an RLCO when it crosses the mean, then what does it do until the next time that it comes back crosses the mean? That's a pretty nice move, uh, right there in a matter of about two hours. Um, that's you know a buck and a half. Let's see if we can get another one here. All right, here's one on uh, UVXY also from Friday. And this is later in the day. So at the previous one we saw was a 6-hour move up in TNA, which ended at about 12.30, my time. Uh, this is UVXY. So when TNA, which is the uh, Russell small cap triple leverage, uh, that's going up when the market's going up. When the market goes up, UVXY is usually going down. At the end of that long move, what you had now was a, a return of volatility to the market. And so after a long down move in UVXY, you get this regression line crossover here that occurs inside the blue circle. And then price enters the river. I end up getting an entry at about 3020. If you look, remember my last little discussion, if you could even wait till 3040 for the Bollinger Band 2, the ribbon to cross the Bollinger Band main. Notice that the next time that the uh, the ribbon crosses the Bollinger Band mean. It's not up in here till 31.40. Uh, you know, so that's that's a uh, a dollar move. That's a three percent move. You know, that's a three R move, and you can actually get a better exit than waiting for it to come all the way back because really you have an an entry here, then it gets as high as almost 32, and then it starts pulling back. And now this is where the um, the Bollinger Band two ribbon. The mean rolls over. You can also get out over here. Either one of the, any any exit in in this range over a 40 minute period gives you a better exit than waiting for the ribbon to cross the Bollinger Band mean. So I don't mind taking this exit here at uh, 3160 for four and a half R. Um, so again, uh, a green move down, regression line crossover, buy somewhere in here, but not later than the Bollinger Band two crossing the river. I could have could have or should have added a position when uh, price left the river. Uh, I could have added a position here when the trending behavior began when the 30 period regression line exit by getting up in here. Uh, but in any case, I got to be out not later than I think about 31.50. Uh, so that's sort of a typical move in UVXY. If there's no questions on that one. I want to move on to the next one. So we got. All right, this is a typical, this will be the last one. This is a typical uh, picture of what the uh, of entries look like early in the in the phase of these kind of trades. Um, I call this one a uh, RFA trade. Uh, this was on uh, Wednesday. And uh, so what I had was a UVXY had made a huge move up. Uh, it pulled back to the Bollinger Band mean, went sideways failed out of the river, but then found support right at the VMAP. And then for a period of one, two, three, three-minute candles, so over a 10-minute period, it failed to fail further. And it looked like to me like it was actually starting to move up. 
And so I'm willing to buy it right in here. Now you can see the ribbon is pointing up. Price has entered the river. I'm willing to go long here at 30, 36. With an initial target of the Bollinger, of the, uh, Bollinger Band mean at about 30, 80. And, you know, guys, that's one and a half far away. And as long as it doesn't violate below the VWAP, I really like that. And the, the other idea on this one is, is that if it fails at the VWAP, I'm instantly going to be short or stop and reverse because this thing is poised on the edge of a knife. Uh, and so my preferred target would be actually to go long with SVXY rather than UVXY. Going shortly visually. But by the time it gets to this position here, I can already get to no lose. Uh, and then if this works, it'll work fine. It'll get to 32, which could be 5R. If it, or it could get to 31 and a quarter, which would be 2.5 or 3R. And that's just the top of the river. So I really like this position here because if it unfolds and just goes back and tests the previous high, I'm going to have 4 or 5R in hand. Uh, if it only gets halfway up, 50% retracement, I've got a couple R in hand. I'm already at no lose. And then if it fails below the VWAP, I'm going to go short. So this is actually a perfect moment in the market for me because I can have a uh, low-risk trade with high payoff in either direction. And the amount of time that I have money at risk here is only about two candles. So I got about five minutes of open risk uh, with, my, with my seed capital. Uh, so that's what I want to show on this one. My machine is locking up again, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's the, that'll be the last uh, um, case study for tonight. I'll get the, uh, the report review uploaded. It lasts about uh, ten or twelve minutes. I'll have that at YouTube in about you know in about thirty minutes. It's already finished processing. I just get uploaded. Um, so if, and I'll try to get this video processed and hung there too. Uh, I apologize for the bad audio and whatnot. I think it's just I'm due for a new laptop. It has a little more RAM. I got to retire old Bessie. Um, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it short here, and uh, wish you a good night and have a you know uh, think about a veteran tomorrow on Veterans Day, and uh, take good care of yourself.